Welcome back to Flashpoint. It's been another tough year for the economy. Prices for a lot of different things from homes to groceries remain high with high interest rates still hanging around. And one local economist now making his predictions about a possible recession going into 2023. Joining us now is John Connaughton. He's an economics professor at UNC Charlotte's Belk College of Business. He's also the director of the North Carolina Economic Forecast. Uh, professor, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, leave it to me as a journalist to, to overly simplify the, the hard work you do uh, on, a, on a daily basis. But if you can, what noticeable changes, perhaps like on the granular level, at the pocketbook level, do you think folks are going to see in the economy come next year? Well, I think that you know, we're, we're, we're watching an event in slow motion, which is the Fed trying to wrestle with bringing down inflation. We've all experienced a year and a half of inflation uh, going back to uh, early 21. Um, and, you know, it's, it seems to have peaked this summer, but we still have, you know, 7% inflation. Um, over that period of time, uh, prices have gone up since August of 20 when this, when the pandemic was essentially over. Uh, from August of 20 to today, prices have gone up by over 15%, but households' wages have only gone up by about 11%. So there's that 4% gap. And, you know, right now we're about 4% worse off. But looking forward into 2023, you know, as I say, it's been this sort of slow motion process where prices have going up, going up. The Fed this year has been raising interest rates in an attempt to try to break the inflation cycle. And it's going to be real interesting to see it just kind of as it slowly rolls out in early 23. Uh, will the Fed be able to do this with a so-called soft landing? Or are they going to go ahead and have to put us into a recession to break the, uh, the inflation pressure, if you will? And uh, that's going to be a very interesting story. But for most of us, it's going to play out, as I say, very, very slowly over the year. And we probably won't know very much about how the year went until about this time next year. So so this time next year, uh, when, when I'm interviewing you once again, looking ahead to 2024, do you think we will be in a better place uh, from an inflationary standpoint than we are right now? Oh, I think so. I think by the end of 23, we'll see inflation come down to a level that's still too high for the Fed and, and really too high for long term. But from a consumer standpoint, I think we'll, we'll if the Fed holds to their current plan, um, doesn't lose confidence, doesn't get a little shaky um, and let off the brakes too soon. I think by this time next year, we'll probably be looking at a three to four percent rate of inflation. Um, and during early 24, the Fed should be able to, if they, they keep at it and, and stick to their guns, they should be able to get it back down into the 2 percent range in 2024. OK, why do you think it seems like North Carolina has been somewhat uh, proven to be somewhat resilient uh, in all of this. Sure, we have inflation, but but still, it seems like our, our economy is booming in, in all sorts of sectors. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons for that. I, I think that you know, when you look at the two poles, uh, the Triangle and Charlotte, uh, they have industries, structures in those uh, communities or those metropolitan areas um, that are somewhat resilient. Uh, you know, the tech industry and in, in Raleigh area and, of course, business and finance in Charlotte um, have been so far, so far, have not taken a big hit. Now, going forward in 23, I think that's a little bit more risky for both communities. Um, we'll see what we'll see what happens. But recessions are not good for tech and recessions are not good for the finance industry. All we have to do is remember 2008-9 um, and how hard we got hit here in Charlotte anyway um, as a result of trouble in the finance industry. And I think you said recently you do not think that we'll go into a recession. Do you still feel that way? Uh, well, again, feel, you know, it's it's a probability. Um, I'm putting it at about one third in 2023 that we'll have a recession, two thirds uh, that it won't be called. Slow down, I think, certainly. But what the Fed is projecting right now is going to be very hard to call a recession. What Jay Powell said uh, earlier this week in his press conference was the Fed model expect very modest growth, around a half a percent. I'm forecasting about a little over a percent for North Carolina in 2023. And the unemployment rate to uh, barely hit 5%. That's the Fed's estimate of what 
if they stick to their program, th that's their estimate of what's going to happen in 23. Um, it's going to be hard to call that a recession. And I think that, you know, it, only if it gets worse um, and they aren't really able, I, again, soft landing, maybe not, but uh, maybe not a bouncy landing either. So I think that the probability here is that about a one third chance that we will slip into recession in 23, about two thirds that we'll just have a very, very slow growth year. Gotcha. When it comes to inflation, do you think that um, are, are there certain goods or services or items that, that you think we're going to see relief on? Oh, I think we've already started to see relief on energy. Uh, and to a certain extent, a lot of what caused the ramp up, particularly to the high rates of inflation this summer, was energy. When you take energy and food out of the CPI, excuse me, when you take energy and food out of the CPI, it drops back down uh, to around 6%. So I think it'll be a while before we start to see a break in food prices. It'll be a while before we start to see a break in shelter prices. Uh, but we're already seeing a break in energy. That's causing us to slow the rate of inflation. We call this dis deflation, uh, excuse me, dis <laughs> disinflation, where the rate of inflation slows. Um, but we probably won't see much on the food side or the housing side until uh, 23. And uh, as far as the housing is concerned, it'll be late 23 before we start to see any break in that. Speaking of that, that's my last question. The housing market here in Charlotte has appeared almost impervious to the other factors uh, uh, surrounding it. Uh, what do you think is going to happen next year when it comes to, to homes, uh, the market itself, and, and their prices? Well, it, again, it depends on where the feds goes with, with interest rates. Uh, right now, the, the, the betting money uh, is suggesting that they're probably going to go to a, a peak uh, federal funds rate, about five and a half percent. If they do that in early 23, I think that'll probably mean that the mortgage rates, 30 year fix will probably push 7% during most of 23. Um, that's going to take some bite out of prices, uh, but not a lot of bite out of prices because housing stock is is low. Um, and even basically, no matter what, we're not going to we're not going to change the housing stock shortage uh, for for several years, and maybe even not then. Uh, so that's going to keep pressure on prices for single family homes and also for um, rental units as well. John Conadin, one of the smartest people around when it comes to talking about this stuff, and, and, and does a superb job of, of making it seem. Um, understandable to the rest of us. Professor, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. More Flashpoint after this.